So here we are, we're into the holiday season, which also means we're into the home heating season. We're a scant three weeks away from the winter solstice when we get to our shortest day of the year. So Minnesotans and Americans like to, to brighten their lives a little bit by decorating inside and outside their homes, lift our spirits a little bit. So I want to remind you about a couple things regarding your holiday decor. Please. Be mindful of the extension cords that you might be using to brighten your tree or to light the outside of your home. If you're going to do that, make sure that you're checking the, the quality of those cords. Make sure that there is, uh, their plugs are in good shape, that the wire is not frayed in any way. But maybe the biggest thing is my concern about people's use of extension cords. We talk about people daisy chaining those cords and stringing a number of those things together. And it's very easy to, to buy the very inexpensive cords that are very small gauge wire. The fact of the matter is that those wires carrying that amount of wattage can heat up. And when you've got a number of those things strung together, they can actually get hot enough to ignite a fire, particularly if they are around natural Christmas trees or boughs or garlands that are used to decorate the home. So if you are going to light up your home, please get quality extension cords. And the fewer the better. Plug them directly into a, the wall socket if possible. We also um, are, we need to be mindful about not covering those. People think sometimes that the extension cords are unsightly, so they will throw an area rug or, a, or a, a throw rug over those things to prevent a trip hazard. In effect, what you sometimes do by covering those with a rug, twofold problem, you create an additional tripping problem, especially for some of our senior citizens who may be using a walker to navigate their way around your home. Um, and the other problem is that it holds in that heat. And again, if those extension cords get hot and now they're covered by a rug, they get that much hotter and could serve as a potential ignition source for a residential fire. Next thing I want to mention. So much of our our holiday gatherings, you know, it, regardless of your cultural background, they often center around food. So most homes are going to be involved in the preparation of holiday meals. So a quick reminder that if you are going to be cooking, not just during the holiday season, but any time, stay and look when you cook. Unattended cooking accounts for about 80% of the residential fires that happen in the United States. So we advise you not to walk out of the kitchen when you've got things on the stove top or things in the oven. If a fire should happen to erupt on the stove top, please do not throw things onto that fire, particularly not water, especially if it is a grease-related fire. It's simple enough to deal with it if you simply remove the heat source by turning off the burner and slide the cover over the pan. I always advise people to keep a cookie sheet or a pizza pan handy when you're cooking something on the stove top because even if the particular pan or skillet you're using doesn't come with a lid, a cookie sheet or a pizza pan is usually large enough to cover virtually anything you have on the stove top. And then leave it covered for a good 20 or 30 minutes, which I know sounds like a long time, but lifting up that cover or sliding it off to take a peek and check the condition of the fire might give it a fresh gulp of air and cause it to erupt. Same thing goes for an oven compartment fire if you're cooking a turkey or a ham or whatever you might have in the oven. Should a fire start in that oven compartment, turn off the heat, leave the oven door closed. If the kitchen has become a little bit smoked up, call 911. Have the local fire department come. Let them check the condition of things inside that oven compartment and let them use their heavy duty extricator fans to remove the smoke from your home. Next thing I want to talk about. Um, I want to get back to Christmas trees. If you are going to celebrate Christmas, if your background is such that you are celebrating that particular holiday with a tree inside the house and you're using a natural tree, please make sure that you keep it watered. Please make sure that you keep any source of, of flame, particularly candles, at least three feet away from that tree. I also would advise you not to hang on to that too long when we get into the new year dispose of it properly and in a timely manner. Those trees dry out pretty quickly. And when those trees dry out and they are exposed to open flame, as Steve told you in his story, those things can become almost explosive. I also want to address something as someone who is a senior citizen myself. As we get older, sometimes it becomes a little bit more work for our bodies to generate enough heat to keep us warm. 
So we often rely on supplemental sources of heat, space heaters in particular, to keep ourselves comfortable if we're watching TV, if we're gathering with family in the living room, or maybe even when we're going to bed. I'd advise people not to use space heaters when going to sleep. You should always be awake when you're using a space heater. Make sure that you keep anything that's combustible, which is to say anything that can burn, at least three feet away from any one of those space heaters. And a space heater also should be plugged directly into a wall outlet, not plugged into an extension cord. My last bit of advice is something that, that holds true year-round. You know, our first line of defense for residential fire are working smoke alarms. Maybe you should make it a point today when you see this, to go around your home and check every smoke alarm that you have in your residence. It's easy enough if you just gently take the kitchen broom handle and reach up. Unless you've got vaulted ceilings, you can probably reach the test button, push the test button on those smoke alarms. Make it a point to do that every month. If you still have smoke alarms that require batteries to be changed, we advise once a year at the very least. Very often we suggest you do it twice a year. Maybe when you change your clocks, move them ahead or move them back as we move in and out of daylight savings time. Smoke alarms have a defined lifetime. There is a date stamped on the back of those. If you have the wherewithal to actually get up and unscrew it from the ceiling to check the date, wonderful. But I will tell you, at the very least, take a look at it. If it's not, not still a nice bright white color, if your smoke alarm is turned into some shade of ivory, I can guarantee you it's probably out of date and needs to be changed. Even hardwired smoke alarms need to be changed every 10 years. So, please, make it a point to see to it that those alarms are working. My last word on alarms has to do with a different type of alarm. In Minnesota, you are required to have a carbon monoxide alarm within 10 feet of any sleeping area of your home. Please make sure that you have one there. Make sure that it's operational. It has a test button. If you don't already have this type, the next time you have to replace one of those. Those have a shorter lifespan, five to seven years. When you replace it, try to get the ones with the constant red digital readout. It'll let you know long before it reaches an alarm level that there is something that is leaking carbon monoxide in your home, which is an odorless, colorless gas, but it can be a killer. So let's avoid another tragedy by making sure that you have a working carbon monoxide alarm within 10 feet of any sleeping area of your home. With that, I wish you a happy holiday and a happy and safe heating season. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions or comments? I have one. Please. Um, I'm interested uh, about artificial trees. Do we have some of the same concerns with the artificial tree or not so much? Or? I'm going to call on Bob first and then uh, we have a couple of other talented folk in the audience that could also answer. Go ahead, Bob. Though artificial trees may be a little bit less of a concern, they're still a concern because they are made out of combustible materials. And a lot of what goes into an artificial tree is plastic. And if you ask a firefighter or a fire chief or a former fire marshal, they will all attest to the fact that plastic is nothing but a solid form of petroleum, which is to say gasoline. And they will burn, and burn very hot very quickly. So same thing applies. You want to keep any heat source, particularly open flame, at least three feet away from an artificial tree. 